Uh, coach, over the last couple of days, both Nate and Kale used the phrase multiple times. It starts with me. It starts with our top guys. What can you say about the performance from your top players tonight? Yeah, it always does. I think, you know, your leaders and your top guys, you hear it all the time, have to be your top guys. But then in the same breath, you don't want to just rely on your top guys all the time. Um, but they're put out in situations to help you produce offense, and they're hard on themselves when they don't. Um, I like that, personally, because they're holding themselves to a high standard. Um, but I mentioned this morning to somebody else that it's still a group of five working for one another that helps create offensive opportunities for those guys and for other guys. It's not a one-man job or a two-man job to create offense. And, and I thought we were we were more connected tonight as a group of five, um, working at the same time instead of one or two guys working and, you know, a couple of guys watching. Um, yeah, but they come up and play, like, their best game of the series, you know, and they get rewarded on skill plays that start with hard work from the group, and then their skills allowed to shine, and, and then they were fantastic. Kale was outstanding, creating scoring chances not just for his line mates but for himself, beating guys one-on-one, -on -one, and obviously Nate was the same way. And, and, I mean, the power play steps up, tough go for a handful of games, but we win the special teams, and... I mean, it's a huge response after goal one, after goal two. Um, so it was, it was, it was a great team effort. Like we were short, um, a guy on the bench with Trennan leaving the game, and so you know we were running kind of three lines with a little bit of a mix. And um, guys did a nice job. They got into the game. They stayed in the game. They stayed disciplined. You've used the expression that Dallas has a say in this series, too, and I wondered where this game ranks for you in terms of what Colorado had to say in response. Well, it was a, I mean, it was an evenly played game. It was a close game, and, that, and it's not the first one of the series. I know, hey, we haven't led, we haven't, but there's, you know, game one's a one-goal game, game two's a one-goal game, and... You know, this one's a one-goal game. Like, there's, I think there's four one-goal games if you take the empty nets out of it so far in the series. And, and, you know, they played a good hockey game. We had a, you know, they made some mistakes that we capitalized on, and we had some unforced errors that they capitalized on too. And they, But they still had a say in those um, goals against, right? Like, we have the turnover the first one and it's bang bang back of the net and we we had an option to rim that just to get out of trouble we throw one over the glass and their power play capitalizes but it's after a handful of really good shifts from dallas so it's a little bit back and forth you got to survive those situations you got to bend not break and um you know we broke a couple times tonight but so did they you know like i think I like it because it was a really resilient game from us. You know, go down twice and just stay with it. Don't give up on it. Um, yeah, and that and that's probably the the thing I like the most of it. it. Was they took some of the stuff we showed over the last couple of days on the offensive side of it, and you can see steps in the right direction and a little more confidence and not so uptight. And, and scared to make plays as we were in the previous couple games, you know, trying to be perfect. Like, we, we played our game. We played with skill. We played with little pace. Um, so, you know, I don't know if it ranks as my favorite game of the series, but it's certainly a huge win for us. Nick and then Eric. You mentioned Kale creating scoring shoots for himself. The second goal is an example of that. Can you just describe the move he made to set up the shot? Yeah, and I mean, I think he did that like three times. Like he drove one right to the paint, and I don't know what it hit. I haven't seen it on replay, but he drove it right in there, uh, all the way down to uh, um, Ottinger. They did a nice job, sort of picking everyone else up to be able to recognize that and not just shoot it from distance after you beat a guy. To, to be able to drive it in the paint takes an elite level of patience and awareness and skill and and he showed that on multiple times tonight and it's like they're doing such a good job getting in the shooting lanes 
you you can't like we every one of our D or theirs doesn't have the ability to dance a guy in space and take it to the net right like it's it takes elite skill to be able to do that and there's only a handful of guys in the league that can do it um and he ends up doing it multiple times tonight to create that scoring chance so it's just it's just high skill awareness um understanding your opponent I'm sure is part of it and and what they're trying to do and so I mean great on him I mean that's what we need from him obviously we need that now especially where we're at in the series and and it, his skill shines through and his competitiveness shines through tonight for starters is there an update on Yakov training um well he wasn't good enough to come back in the game uh he, you know, it's not. I don't know if it's anything serious, but what's serious? Like, if he misses his next game, it's serious enough, and and we'll see. Like, we'll see how he presents tomorrow. What kind of work the trainers can do on him, and we'll try to get him ready to go. And if he's not ready, we'll have to put somebody else in. You know, you guys enter the third period. It's two to two, and your season's on the line. Just what does it do for you guys? Is it a little bit of a relief to get that goal pretty quickly and finally have them chasing? Oh yeah, yeah. I think I definitely like to get that sub first lead of the series, even though it's been close for long periods of time. Um, it, it, you know, then they got to push. You know, like we haven't forced them. You know, throughout the course of the series, to to push and have to try and create. You know, they they're a smart, disciplined, well coached, well balanced, deep hockey team, and. You know, part of that is, the, you know, you're allowed to be that more often when you're not behind, you know. So it was frustrating because I thought we had a good first period and we, we've, that turnover finally happens. Like we're talking and trying to make sure we're disciplined and pushing to try and get the first goal but still defending the right way and we haven't been able to get it. And we finally get it in the third period, so that helps. And you can see, then you know, even though there's 18 minutes left, they they have to they have to get more guys involved in their attack to try and create. They can stay as patient as they would like to, but hopefully, we're defending well enough throughout the course of the series that they're going to have to, you know, put more guys involved in the rush and in his own play, and uh, we're able to capitalize again, you know, so it's, I think it's huge to be able to get that and, and it gives our, our team room to breathe and, you know, they're, they're, they're a disciplined uh, group and, and resilient group, so you get the lead. I don't think the, the, the comeback goal rattled us at all. It was just like we got lots of time. We can keep pushing, keep doing the right things and just stressing the right things on the bench, but they were bought into it tonight. It was a really good group effort. And Middlestat uh, scored that early third period goal. Can you sort of talk about the way he's fit in and the moments he's had? I mean, it can't just be about one line, obviously. Yeah, and I think that's huge for him, right? Because he's, even earlier in the game, he gets that chance. They're walking in on the two-on-one. He's kind of all alone and loses it, loses it off his stick. So he hasn't capitalized on some of his best opportunities. But he scores last game off the four check. He scores again tonight. Um I mean, any offense that you can sort of chip in, it's just not easy to create. Even our top guys are having a really tough time because checking is, is something that all the coaches are stressing and the buy-in from the teams are so high, especially when you get down to the final eight. You can he played a rock-solid game defensively, and he, he was able to chip in again tonight, which is just huge. I mean, it's been a huge addition for us. Coach, when you, I know it was 3-1 coming into tonight, but when you went back and watched video of any of these first four games, did it ever really feel that imbalanced to you, like you were that inferior of a, of a team? No, no, it doesn't. But then you read stuff online, and it certainly feels like it is. <laughs> uh, you know, like it... It is what it is. You got. It's about the results this time of the year. So I get the criticism, and I get when you win, I get the praise. It's well deserved, and you got to find a way. You know, it's just not always that easy. Even things that we think are tactically correct, you know, you still you have to repeat them over and over enough to be able to get rewarded. Like just beating their pressure one time doesn't guarantee you goals, you know. It's got to be often enough. And, again, they have something to say about it too. And, um, you know, four one-goal games and, you know, there's one that we let get away. And, 
you know, tonight we came out on the winning end of it, and we got to go try and do it again at home. Last few, Kyle. Jared, you split up Nate and Miko on the top line. Just curious what you thought about the, the results of that tonight. Yeah, uh, no complaints. You know, it was just, you know, I was asked earlier why, and it's, I mean, we weren't producing, right? We, we weren't producing enough to win, and, and I think as a coach you want to try and stay with it, let the team respond, let the line respond um, to whatever, you know, tactical and systematic things you can give them. But at some point you might need to change it to get a spark, you know. Um, it's always a balance of just going to something new and or changing it too early. Um, they've proven in the past that they can come back from, and they might have had a great game together tonight, you know. I don't, I don't know. But I did like both those lines. Um, Drew just, he played a really good game one coming back from the injury or, or game four and uh, in his first one. And um, he's had chemistry with Max, so we put him there. And, and obviously they had a good night. And, and same thing with Miko. I mean, impactful plays like he gets in on the four check on that on the dump and good break oh good dump good four check to sort of create the parise to i think it was gerard shot that that middlestead scores on so i mean we're happy with the change no question yeah i don't think we can we can uh um sort of look back and say we're not we got the win that's that's the most important thing last one jesse coach we've talked about the the playoff atmospheres and the fans really getting into it Broadcast showed a fan sitting behind the bench, trying to maybe resemble your likeness a bit. I didn't know if you if you caught that. I I didn't. Yeah, no, I don't look around too much in the <laughs> stands during the game. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Yeah, thanks. Kale and Georgie up here shortly.